Fans who follow pro football on the radio can tell you that the great performances on the field wouldn't sound as great if it wasn't for the great performers in the broadcast booth. Veteran announcers like the Raiders' Bill King and Philadelphia's Merrill Reese exemplify the men behind the microphone who have called some unforgettable plays in memorable fashion. Now, the Atlanta Falcons may not have a team that's as good as the Raiders or Eagles, but they do have one of the most entertaining and excitable announcers in the business. He's Larry Munson, and this Homer has a homespun style that makes Falcon fans feel right at home. He's lined up wide on the right. We have four wide outs and one running back on third and nine, lying in motion. Miller back, they blitz him. Miller rolls back, dumps it to settle screen. Complete 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. In the corner, touchdown! He's very dramatic. He's like telling his story, and it's like you're reading a book. I think if I wanted to listen to someone announce it or broadcast, I think it'd be Larry Munson. Dalton Hilliard doing to us for the second time this year the same thing, just killing us at the line of scrimmage. Little short, chunky, squatty back, and he is just too much of a handful. Ball Sometimes in the bars they have Larry Munson nights, and people come in the bars and impersonate him and do all that stuff. So when he's talking, everybody knows who it is. We put Lang in motion. They're going to blitz, I believe. Here they come. Miller back. He's going to throw a long lob pattern. Dropped by Floyd Dixon. He just puts his heart into it, and uh, everything's we. You know, it's not the Atlanta Falcons who are doing this or the Georgia Bulldogs are doing this. It's we're driving, we're driving. We need a score, you know, things like that. 23-16. Hugh Millen back to throw. Goes to the right and turns and throws it back in the middle, and everybody jumps. And we catch it, but they're holding us on the one-yard line, and we can't get it in. We call time, but I think we ran out of time. Ooh. We ran out of time. Uh, I've been very much a homer, uh, both with Wyoming University football and basketball and Vanderbilt the same way and Georgia the same way. I am a homer, and I'm a homer with the Falcons. I feel sorry for this franchise, and I really do get uh, deeply and intensely involved with it. Deion Sanders ran a touchdown back this year. I did not hear it played back to me or anything until the next afternoon. Now he's going wide off to the right. Deion to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50. My God, Deion Sanders is going to score. My God. I remember saying, uh, my God, uh, Deion's going to score. And I did not know that I said a second or two later, oh, my God, I didn't know I had done that. Yeah, I guess, I, I guess I want to win bad. I really do want to win bad. Armed with his trusty torn chair, reminding him to paint a vivid scene for the listener, the magnificent Munson has weaved his most epic tales covering University of Georgia football. Throughout 24 years, he has even broken a chair, urging on his beloved bulldog. Behind him, going to throw on a run, complete to the 25, to the 30, Lynch has got 35, 40, Lynch has got 45, 50, 45, 40, run, Lindsay, 25, 20, 50, 25, Lindsay Scott, Lindsay Scott, Lindsay Scott. I'm sure if Ray Scott or Musburger were running a radio class, they would have thought I was 13 years old. I didn't mean to beg Lindsay to run, but I had to. I came right to a chair, a metal steel chair with about a five-inch cushion. I started bouncing on the chair up and down, but with my thighs caught under the table, I couldn't come all the way up. And apparently the chair was getting weak as it went down like an accordion, real slow, just like that in slow motion. All of a sudden, I'm on the floor. That's what really happened with the chair. Auburn trying to break our hearts here. Auburn was just eating us alive and coming down the field going to take the sugar bowl away from us. I begged him to... Uh, Hunker down, you guys. And I said it's second, third, and fourth down, and it worked, and he stopped it. I know I'm asking a lot, you guys, but hunker it down one more time. And Campbell, as they blitz on him, he threw a high, wobbly pass. They fight in the end zone, and the dogs broke it up. They broke it up. They broke it up. Oh, look at the sugar falling out of the sky. Look at the sugar falling out of the sky. A lucky Jamaican stogie preserved with electrical tape props up his rosters. But just what's in those cigars? Munsonese can feature a cowboy center throwing a touchdown pass. Tom Rafferty, the center. Rafferty back to Aikman on the shotgun. Rafferty fires down the middle, and it is complete. On and then there's Munson, the madcap mathematician, chaotically calculating a runner's progress. And then suddenly, in mid-run, counting him down into the end zone. 
The result, vintage Munson. Miller going to hand it to Bremers. Bremers, five, 10, 12, 15, 17, 10, 6, 5. Touchdown, Bremers in the corner. The Falcons uh, came away with a last-second victory over Buffalo last Sunday, and the radio call by Larry Munson was almost as exciting as the 50-yard winning field goal by Paul McFadden. Try a long field goal. McFadden, long, long, long. Good, good, good. And it is intercepted. Little Dimry down. They tell me I'm highly nervous. I guess I am. And I am uh, intense, excitable, I'm a practical joker. 35, 30, 25, 20, and going to be shoved out around. In a boat fishing, which I used to do all the time. In fact, I fished for a living for 21 years on television before these famous guys, Roland Martin and them, even started. Uh, when I hung a fish, I mean, I really let the camera guy know. I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess I'm that way. I guess I'm excitable and I'm nervous and I'm wrapped up in what I'm doing. Because a small bass means a lot to me.